Hello, everyone. This is Pastor Alan Hathaway. I'm dressed, actually, for military front, Frontier Military Days out at Fort Stevenson. I'm helping out there. Uh, today, uh, that begins at noon uh, and goes to 4 o'clock. Uh, I'd love to see you come out and be a part of that. It's a kind of a fun day and lots of things to do. So I wanted to kind of uh, do a little bit of an advertisement there. But I want to talk to you a little bit about how to become Joe Cool. Uh, when I was a young teenager, uh, just entering my teens, I became quite fascinated with uh, the character that Charles Schultz uh, created sort of as an alter ego for uh, Snoopy, and that was Joe Cool. He was the cool character. He was always in control, or at least thought he was always in control. And it was kind of an interesting character. I found it very interesting. And to be honest with you, as a teenager, I kind of wanted to be cool, Joe. I wanted to be really cool and smooth. I thought about that in relationship to uh, tomorrow. Uh, Monday is actually National or uh, Sunglass Sunglasses Day. And uh, I thought a little bit about what we use sunglasses for. Uh, the character uh, Joe Cool is cool because he wears sunglasses. And so that concept of, of covering up or hiding behind sunglasses is something that makes us cool. Sunglasses uh, actually took off as a sort of a major cultural statement uh, in the beginning of the 20th century. It was... They were used, uh, of course, for blocking the sun, but sunglasses were pretty much unknown until the 1700s uh, when actually scientists who were observing the sun or observing experiments that, that used a great deal of light would use sunglasses to protect their eyes from those experiences. But as it wore on during the 1800s, sunglasses became uh, very much a part of the culture. Uh, every pair had to be made by an optician up until the 1920s, when a man by the name of Foster, of the famous Foster Grant uh, persuasion, who was working in the area of uh, accessories for ladies, primarily combs, and with the 1920s, most of ladies started cutting their hair short, so combs were not important, so he shifted his business focus to the production of uh, cellulose sunglasses. Uh, cellulose was used as a type of plastic, uh, clear plastic, before uh, we had uh, plastics based on petroleum. And so he began producing sunglasses out of cellulose material, and he marketed them as helping to make you look cool, like the celebrities, because the celebrities were all wearing sunglasses. I'll tell you why that was and how that directly connects if you, if you get a chance to come to service or if you get a chance to listen in on our um, uh, website where we will post the audio of, this ser of the complete sermon that I preach uh, this Sunday morning. But suffice it to say that it wasn't necessarily a good reason why they were wearing sunglasses during from the mid-1800s until the uh, early 1940s. There was, a, there was a particular reason for that. But it made everybody look cool. And so you wanted a pair of sunglasses so you could look cool. And these new cellulose Sunglasses could make you look cool for a uh, small outlay rather than the very expensive outlay of going to an optometrist. And so that's what kind of changed everything to the cool factor. It's kind of important that we feel like we look cool. I was intrigued by this in relationship to a story told about Jesus in John chapter 9. In that story, Jesus heals a blind man that has been blinded from birth. Uh, as we don't know what caused his blindness, Jesus said that it was not his fault or his parents, but rather that God had allowed it so that it, 
he could display his glory through this man. But Jesus heals the man. He goes and washes his eyes, uh, which Jesus smeared with mud made with spittle in the pool of Siloam. And he immediately is able to see and goes and starts telling everybody, rejoicing that he's able to see. And and, uh, suddenly people are asking what happened and they drag him to the Pharisees who are in charge of his particular synagogue in Jerusalem. And and they begin questioning him quite closely. How did all this happen? What happened? Why did it happen? And he begins saying, well, Jesus made made this happen. I was sitting there and, and Jesus walked by with his disciples and they started talking about me and Jesus made this mud, smeared it on my eyes and I I washed in the pool of Siloam like he told me to and I came out seeing. And they said, well, this man is, we know he's not a good man. He's a He's, a, he's deceptive. He is a false prophet. He healed you on the Sabbath. That, that just shouldn't have happened. And, and so there's a lot of consternation. And they send him out and they bring his parents in and say, surely this man wasn't really born blind. Surely he wasn't blind from birth. That, that can't be. And his parents, who are terribly frightened by this point, uh, say, yes, yes, he was born blind. And And then they go on to say, well, who healed him? And they said, well, we don't want to answer because they knew that anybody who said Jesus was the Messiah would be thrown out of the synagogue. So they said, well, he's of age. You ask him. We we don't know anything about what happened here. And so they bring the man back in and through a very challenging confrontation, they demand who healed you? Why don't, don't quit saying this Jesus healed you. Uh, what happened here? Uh, we know that this man is a bad man. We know he's an evil man. And we, we want you to quit pronouncing his name. What is intriguing is this blind man says, well, if he's a bad man, how could he heal a man born blind? We know God doesn't hear people who are sinners. Very interesting statement. And they basically said, well, how dare you teach us? We're the cool kids. How dare you, you uh, worthless man, try and teach us who are educated and knowledgeable in religious matters. We're the cool ones. What are you trying to do? We've got our sunglasses on. Can't you tell? And they throw him out of the synagogue. Jesus finds the man and... uh, says, do you believe in the Son of Man? And he says, who is he? And Jesus says, I am the Son of Man. I am the one talking to you, the one right before your eyes. And the man falls down on his face and said, I believe, and worships Jesus. It's a profound moment. Jesus said, I've come into the world those who are blind might see and that those who are seeing might be blind. There were Pharisees standing nearby when this all happened and they said to Jesus, are we blind? They understood the implication of what he was saying. And he said, if you believe that you see, as long as you keep your cool sunglasses on, in other words, Yes, you are blind. But once you take them off and understand who you really are and what's really going on, then the grace to heal you on the inside can happen. I thought about that in relationship to all of our lives. We all like to put up a false front, a false bravado, as it were something that hides our real intentions, hides what's really going on inside of us. This blind man had been blind. He knew what had happened to him. And he knew what the grace of Christ was in his life, that healing that had come into him. And there was no pretension with this man. But the Pharisees who stood by, there was a great deal of pretension in their lives. When we come to Christ, 
we drop the pretension. We come to him with a straightforward honesty, saying this is really what's happening in my life. We take the sunglasses off. We quit trying to be the cool kid, trying to be Joe Cool. And when Christ touches us, the most amazing thing happens. What we so desperately wanted when we put on our sunglasses for ourselves really happens in our hearts and lives. And that is a wonderful thing. That's how to become Joe Cool for real. Thank you for listening. Uh, God bless you. Hope to see you in church.